Welcome to the Manitowoc Garage. In today's video, we're going to highlight the Manitowoc HED RCL display with version 5 software, onboard diagnostic capability. We're also going to highlight version 6 Manitowoc HED RCL display that we refer to as the Generation 3 display. So I've referenced that version 5 cranes actually showed you onboard diagnostics. That's the extra tab here in uh, main menu screen 3. So if I hit the I.O. tab here, I can see the first screen that it shows me is module status. So it shows me the version of firmware and also the version of application software in the master here. But the version of firmware and every other module on the machine for the MBT60 here. Also, the CAN status to the right here. PC1, which is our primary uh, HED CAN bus, and it's showing OK. J1939 is OK. This is the truck chassis CAN. And Crane Star, if you have that option. Anything that's missing, we can see here. So the radio remotes module is missing. And the truck engine ECM, although showing OK, is actually missing as well. Hit the arrow for the next screen, all the LMI system information. So the transducers, angle, length, slew, two block, all the outrigger beam potentiometers shown in the screen, values, and it is real time. I'm moving the angle around here, it's getting a little crazy, but interlock information, this is also pretty useful. Um, so to operate the crane, all of these little lights have to be green here. All right, so the truck ignition switch has to be off, green light. Power takeoff switch needs to be on. It's red right now because it's not on. The crane power switch must be on. Remote power switch must be off. The armrest and seat switch must be on. Operate with full remote. The ignition switch in the truck has to be off. These would all have to be on or off and of course green light. Control state of the machine right now. E-stop status. So the cab e-stop is clear, the lower e-stop is clear, the remote is clear, and the suction switch in the hydraulic tank is clear. The next screen, all the outputs off of the server module, which we call the master module. So all the outputs, whether they're normal, on or off, if it's a variable output, you'll see numbers here, on or off, or so digital. You'll also see under status, normal, short to battery, open, short to ground, different types of errors like that. All the outputs off the cab modules, number one and number two, and they have them labeled here, cab module one, cab module two. All the outputs off the lower modules, front modules one and two. All the outputs off the rear module the counterweight keypad outputs, all the inputs to the server modules, to the server module, the master. All right, so digital would show on or off, analog would show a value outside here. All the inputs to the cab module one, the outrigger keypads, and the joysticks on the machine. So anything that goes into any module, any input, and the module status window, of course, again, is here. I want to go back to the interlock information. So the e-stop status, if I press an e-stop here on the simulator, I see e-stop status cab active. So I see that's, that thing is active. If I hit escape here, anytime on the machine, NBT60, if an e-stop is pressed, it will show you a picture of which e-stop is active. So this would be the cab. Here would be a lower e-stop. It shows you a picture. Kind of makes it easy to troubleshoot at that point. Also, when it's pressed, this button will take you to the diagnostic screen, which helps you determine which e-stop is active. 
This screen is for version 6 machines. So it's a new style screen. Navigation's a little bit different. So you have a navigation pad in the center here to select your options. And then, of course, the check mark to uh, select it. Do you want to show you with version 6? We have some. different options in the calibration screen. So you still have sensor calibration. You now can set your uh, date time, we call it the real time clock. Load chart enabling. To the right here we see an engine, so if I select it I can actually select the engine type EEPROM. The fuel level source address EEPROM. Driver side and passenger side throttle pedals here, this is an MBT30H-2 pretty simple to set them as well so make sure the driver side throttle pedal is completely at rest press the check mark it shows you the value right now when you press the check mark it writes it into the minimum value column and it says press and hold the driver's side throttle pedal and now we're going to set the max value prior to this you would do this with a laptop and software if you have a radio remote, this option will be shown. You can actually calibrate and or set the EEPROMs, min and max, threshold and maximum for the remote control functions. Software uploading, this is for the display only, so only if you need to put new display software in. And you can also set the two block EEPROM here as well, whether it be standard or wireless. Thanks for checking out today's video. We hope you found this information helpful. Please tune back in for future videos.